Hello, computer cooks. Well, today, I am a computer. Or at least that's the title of this piece of work by photographer James Ball, aka DocuByte. That's what's on the menu today. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Now, here on Retro Recipes, I usually like to share with you hopefully fun retro computing projects of my own with a bit of a twist. Uh, make sure you subscribe for more of those. But every now and then, I like to mix it up and share something with you that's just too good to resist, as was the case with James Ball. He's a photographer and art director and friend of mine from my hometown of London, and he was watching an Apple commercial where this question was posed. Hey. What you doing on your computer? What's a computer? Now, I think it's fair to say that as the decades have been turned by the hands of time, we've gone from these playful looking futuristic designs full of personality and character, seen here in the museums where DocuBite shot the photos we're about to see, to, well, yeah. So let's celebrate the visual character of retro computers and take a journey into a time that colour forgot as we answer the question Well, who better to answer that question with a little help from James than the computers themselves? Let's start at the beginning, 1973 to be precise, and Wang was a highly successful computer company of the 50s, and it introduced the 2200 in 1973, making this the oldest machine in our series. It was small enough to fit on your desk, and called a mini, not a microcomputer, as it predated the introduction of microprocessors by several years. It was a personal computer before PCs, and Wang continued to be successful until the late 1980s. Skipping forward to 1977, a lot of people's favourite memory, the Apple II. I've still got a couple of these, and the Apple II was one of the first highly successful mass-produced microcomputer products, designed, of course, by Steve Wozniak, Woz, and Steve Jobs. It was touted as an extraordinary computer for ordinary people, like us. Produced until 1993, in updated incarnations, the Apple II line established Apple as the computer company of the turn of the 1980s, although some might argue the next company was the one that won the game. Isn't that beautiful? The Commodore PET also came out in 1977, and the name derived from Personal Electronic Transactor. Now, although you could trace back the naming of the device to the pet rock craze of 1975, its iconic angular exterior really point to its 2001 Space Odyssey inspiration. Despite some complaints about the chiclet keyboard, the original pet definitely created what was going to be a very successful product line for Commodore. Well, let's stay in 1977 for a few moments longer. It's nice and cozy here after all. And this cute little bug is the ADM3A terminal. This was kind of an iconic design for the time. It became very popular with early personal computer builders because of its low cost. It's about a thousand dollars. Now, despite some drawbacks and being so-called a dumb terminal, because it couldn't actually do computational tasks, and it could only display uppercase letters, as you can see here, the machine was still hugely successful, and ADM reportedly stood for American Dream Machine. I mean, American Dream Machine. Wow, look at that. This is the 1978 IBM 3278. And it was part of the 3270 series of IBM green screen terminals used to connect to larger mainframes. 
account, this computer predated the mouse, so selection of the on-screen characters was assisted by an optional selector pen. Hmm. Now, something that didn't need a selector pen was this beautiful thing, the Commodore PET 200 from 1979. This was essentially an upgraded PET with improved memory and that beautiful, wholly redesigned chassis. Those rounded corners really give it a space age feel. And there's a reason it looks so good. Commodore actually enlisted the services of Porsche Design to help put the finishing touches to that detachable keyboard and monitor with a tilt and swivel option. Well, what have we got here? This is the fantastically named Interdeck Data Systems Super Brain. This was an all-in-one commercial microcomputer first sold by Interdeck in 1979. Cost about $2,000 and this machine was really known for its reliability. And in its 1981 advert, it stated, just about the only service tool required is the common screwdriver. Well, we've all been there. One of my favorites now from this series, this is the Holborn 6100 from 1981. It's a fascinating trumpet of a computer. It's definitely one of the most futuristic designs and was designed by the Dutch industrial design studio Voss. Holborn themselves were based in the Netherlands as well. Hmm, looking at this, maybe Amsterdam. Now the company only made about 200 of these machines and each one cost $10,000. The machine was a commercial failure and eventually forced Holborn to declare bankruptcy. Sad really, because I would have loved to have seen more of these periscope-like computers in use. And now, bringing us bang up to date, well, almost, from 1984, it's the Apple Macintosh. The iconic Mac. This was famously unveiled by Steve Jobs in 1984, who said of the machine, it's insanely great. You know, it was the first successful mouse-driven computer with a graphic user interface. Beautifully depicted here again by James. In real life, this is finished in what became known as Apple Beige. Now Jobs famously agonized over every detail of this, believing it to be the gateway to the masses adopting home computers. For those zillennials among us, born between the late 70s, early 80s, and defined as having an analog past and a digital present, we probably jumped on the bandwagon a bit before then. 